Thank you for tuning in to CCF Lowell's podcast. Wherever you are, we pray that you would be encouraged by today's message. To learn more about us, please visit www.ccflowell.org. And you can also find us on YouTube and Facebook. So many matters number three. Uh, we have, I have four sermons about this subject. This is the third one. Next Sunday will be the fourth one. I've heard from few people that told me, including Pastor Luke, that this is a subject that wish that we could go on and on and on. We'll come back another month to deal more with this issue because, you know, money is, affects every aspect of life. Amen? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So what we did is uh, the first, uh, we had a, uh, can I have the second slide, please? The first week we did the treasure principle. Matthew 13, 44. Second week, we'll talk about the money connection. Today, week three, gaining wealth that matters. Gaining wealth that matters. Huh. So that tells me that there is bad wealth and there is good wealth. You know, the Bible says, fight the good fight. That means there's bad fight. How many have been in a bad fight? Wow. Oh, 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 wow. Okay. You know, bad fight is a fight you lose. A good fight is a fight you win. It's a fight of faith. But there is bad wealth, but there's good wealth. You know, everything, everything that's bad, that means there's something good before it. I learned something from my pastor many, many years ago. Hallelujah. I got about 40 minutes to preach this sermon. Help me, Lord, do that in the, in the right manner and not go off, get off here and there. He taught me something. Uh, as he was preaching, I learned from that personally, that when you have, the reason, the reason there's fake leather, because there's a genuine leather. Yes. You know that? Yes. All right. So because there's a fake Christianity, how many knows there's fake Christianity? Yes. Hello? Yes. How many knows there's fake Christianity? Yes. And actually there's more Christians outside the church than in the church because of fake Christianity. But, the, but because there's fake Christianity, that means there's real Christianity. There's a fake prosperity teachings because there's real good prosperity teachings. I heard the Lord whisper in my heart many years ago as I was watching a certain televangelist without mentioning names. Very powerful televangelist and that used to fill, you know, um, Places 40,000, 50,000 people. And I was home watching and I was getting critical. I said, oh man, Lord, this just doesn't sound right. And uh, I, I'm, not, I'm never going to teach about it. And I was talking about prosperity, wealth, and name it, claim it. And, and the Spirit of the Lord whispered to me and says, Do not allow the abuse of any principle bring you to disuse the principle. All principles of God has been abused and misused. We should not get away from the principles, but get away from the people that abuses the principles. Are we together? Yes. Hallelujah. There is good wealth and there's bad wealth. And, and um, so, so what, what does that really, really mean to me? These are the words of the amen, the faithful and true Jesus Christ to the one of the seven churches in early Christianity, the church of Laodicea. He goes to him, um, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I'm rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined and fire so you can come become rich and white cloth to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. These words from the one, the faithful and true Jesus to that church, teaches us that there's 
people that think they're wealthy because they have a lot of money. Real wealth is not how big your checking account is. Real wealth is not measured by the vehicle that you own or the house that you live in. We are talking from the Word of God. We're not talking from Forbes. We're not talking from Time Magazine. We're not talking, you know, Wall Street. We're talking the Word of God because we belong to God. We belong to His Word. His Word is our constitution. And His Word te- uh, deals with every se- subject of life. And one of it is money. Good wealth. Five o'clock this morning in bed. I, I heard that in my spirit. And at this age, if I don't get up and write it, I'll forget it half an hour later. And I didn't write it, so I came here early. I left the house about 8 to be here early, so I could go to my office, could write it down, and I couldn't remember it. I said, Lord, you got to do something here. You can't leave me like that. No, 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 no. you got to do it. you got to do it right now. And I heard it again. Good wealth is good health. Good wealth is good health. How good is it? Have you ever seen, met, I have, multi-millionaires, but there's nothing they could do with their money because they cannot get up from bed? What good is it? Good, good wealth is good health. You're healthy, you're wealthy. That's number one. Uh, so what, what, is that? what does that mean? What, what, does, what, does that, what does that say to me? If, if, healthy, I'm, if, I'm healthy, if healthy, I'm well. Beloved, he goes, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Are we together this morning? Let me, let me say that again. These are the words of the John the Apostle. And he says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers prospers. So what he is saying is your wealth, your health depends on how wealthy is your soul. Hallelujah. Thank God for three people in the house today. The rest is okay. I, the people told me, Pastor, please, please leave us. We, we just want to, we just want to pay attention to what you're saying. Okay. I will leave you pay attention but then I want those people to pay attention to me now. Hallelujah. Good health, good wealth is based on how wealthy and how healthy your soul is. Ask me what does that mean? I will tell you. Thank you. <laughs> what is your soul? Who is your soul? Your soul is your mind, it's your emotion. And it's your will. Because your soul is created in the image of God. God is trying. You are trying. You are just like God. God is not blonde. Hallelujah. Thank God. But he's not, he's not black either. Praise God. Because he's not flesh. He's spirit. And he is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are spirit. You are flesh, spirit, and soul. Your soul is the one that lives forever. Because when God created Adam, he formed the physical body from the dust. He went in him. The spirit entered him and he became a living soul. What does a man profit if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So your soul is your mind, is your emotion, is your will. You are as wealthy as your mind is. You are as, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pause and give you time to think and then clap after. It's okay. You are as healthy as your emotions. <laughs> it's working. You are as wealthy as your mind is. Are you cultivating your mind lately? Because a man is what a man think. And we are made of house of thoughts. What you think about yourself, what you think about your children, what you think about the future. This is how 
healthy and wealthy you are. It's really not the ibuprofen. It's not, it's not the, you know, vitamin D. It's not up to all that. You could take those things to help, but they will not help if, you're, have, if you carry stinking thinking. If you think lousy about who you are, uh, no insulin going to help you. But if you think healthy about who you are, whose you are, who you belong to, who created you, who made you, you are not just a living being. You are a spiritual being created in the image of God. To conquer, I'm going to say something so I've never said in my life, but I'm ready to say it. And you're so fortunate to be here while I'm saying it. I really are. You're so, f you're, because you could have been at the beach right now. Or it's also hard not here right now. I hope they will get the, the, the record and hear what I'm going to declare over you today. I see millionaires in this room. Hallelujah. I, I had four people way in the back stood up with their hands up there. They're going to be millions before you. <laughs> Somebody helped me that yesterday. We were having breakfast with about four or five men. And, and one of them goes, Pastor, you know, during this teaching that you're teaching, I, I, could, I could feel that there are going to be some millionaires in this house. I said, you know what? I am ready to declare that. I've never declared it before. But you've got to follow the teaching. I see millionaires in good wealth, not just money. I see millionaires that are going to set the captives free emotionally. Amen. Mentally. There's a lot of mental illnesses in the world today, in the church. But we declare wealth in this house that will set mental illness free in Jesus' name. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 and 18. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant. <sighs> nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to, be, to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. Amen. That's the word of God that describes wealth that matters. The wealth that matters are a wealth that, that helps people who are wealthy to do good works and be generous and willing to share. Hallelujah. Have you ever been around an arrogant, wealthy person? It's the ugliest thing. I just want to, you know, get up and slap him on the face and say, who do you think you are? You know, they walk like the earth is blessed that they're walking on it. You know, there's areas, there's certain neighborhoods like this. I'm not going to name who they are. You take a guess. There's certain neighborhoods in Massachusetts. The moment you drive in there, you could see, you know, people, they just, they just walk different. They wear different clothes. They eat different things. They just, you know, all right, Lord, take me out of this. Let's go somewhere else. <laughs> Luke chapter 8, verse 14. The seed that fell among thorns. Jesus was taken, uh, giving a parable about the sower that went out and sowed seed. And the seed is the word of God. One of, some of those seeds fell uh, uh, among thorns. Uh, those people stand for those who, uh, that parable stands for those who hears the word, but on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures. And they do not mature. Let me just really say something that, that I hope those who are taking notes somewhere will grasp this. God is not against pleasure. He's not. If he is, you would not see me on Facebook traveling here and there and going, you know, and fishing and, and having beautiful meal. And that's good. And take a shower every day. 
and clean behind my ears. <laughs> God is not against pleasure. On the opposite, His, his presence is full of joy. Amen. And pleasure evermore. God does not want you to be, you know, like a monk sitting home and just, you know, with a six o'clock face. He, he actually, listen, the Bible says God sits in heaven and laughs. I said to him, Lord, what are you laughing at? He goes, you. <laughs> he laughs at you, at us. At about how stupid we are sometimes. That we don't think well about ourselves. We don't know the value of who we are. The worth, the, 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 the wealth that we carry in us. The glory of God, the presence of Jesus. The magnitude of the Holy Spirit that lives in us. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, let the poor say, I am rich. And God is not against even material wealth. He's not. He created. The silver and the gold is mine, says the Lord. God owns the, the, the cattle on a thousand hills. If God is against money, he will not do what he did to Solomon. When Solomon became king, God said to him, what do you want? And God was ready to give him everything. And Solomon made the right choice. He said, I want wisdom. And God said to him, because you asked for wisdom, you asked a good thing. I'm going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to make you the richest man on the face of the earth. And he was. But then Jesus comes on the scene and says, look at the lilies of the valley. Solomon never dreamed to dress like that. They don't toil, they don't labor, and your heavenly father dresses them so good. Beautiful, beautiful. Amen. We live in a world that often measures success and worth by the size of our bank account. The cars we drive, the houses we live in. We are bombarded with messages that tells us that accumulating wealth, hallelujah, is, is just going after this thing and owning that thing and, and doing this and doing that. But, but no, 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 no. What Jesus is telling us, is that true wealth is found in our relationship with God and in the love and kindness we show to others. It is found in the way we use our resources to help those in need, to lift up the downtrodden and to bring hope to the hopeless. So my dear ones, my dear friends, my, my relatives had a beautiful class this morning with two lovely young ladies from Uganda about membership class. And, and we talked about how important to know that we are family. And, and one of them asked me an amazing question. He goes, so what's the benefit of becoming, of joining CCF as a member? I said, well, I'll give you one. Today, one of our dear sisters, Cindy Noon, lost her mother. We all gonna go there at one o'clock to pay respect. That's one of the benefits. I mean, we all should go there. Can you imagine about 30 or 40 of us walks in and say to her, we love you. You are bone of our bones. You're hurting. We're here to comfort you. So go downstairs after the service, have coffee, fellowship, relax, and let's go together. That's one of the benefits of being part of the family. And there's so many testimonies here that could testify about that. So I call you relatives, not just friends. Let us not be consumed by the pursuit of wealth and material possessions. It's good to have money. It's bad to have money having you. So we don't, you know, this is the thing that the American dream is, the pursuit of happiness. Have you ever read that? Have you ever watched a movie called The Pursuit of Happiness? Is the pursuit of Everybody that comes to America wants to be a millionaire. The big house, the two cars, the vacation home. That's the American dream. 
There's nothing wrong with that, but there's something wrong with pursuing that, with going after it that becomes a God, becomes everything you think of. I'm just going to talk to you today. I'm going to talk to you today. Because most people that I know that go after that, they never get it. And they live a miserable life because all what they think about, how come I don't have it? How come I didn't get it? How come he got it? How come she got it? How come I, I, I could do better than them. I'm smarter. I'm prettier. I'm, I'm healthier. I'm, but I don't get it. So, so it's all what they dwell on. That's all what they think on. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so it's, it's where, where your treasure is, where your heart is. If your heart is after money, you're in a big mess. But if your heart is after God, money will come. And I want to tell you something very important right now. Listen up, listen up, listen up. And I believe this from all my heart. Because I am content with this truth that has set me free. God will only give you as much as he could trust you with. If you're a man of God, if you're a woman of God, he will release to you what he can trust you. But if, you, if, you, if, you, if your um, income is $100,000 a year and, and, and you're not faithful with that, you're not a tither, you're not a giver, you're not a, you're not a kingdom builder, it's never going to grow. If you're not a man of God or my God, it might grow because you might find other ways to make it happen. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? Yes. But if you're a man and woman of God, God will protect you from increasing because it's going to take you away from him. Amen. You know, that's one I will say amen myself. Amen. May we all seek to build wealth that matters. For it is in doing so that we will find true joy. And fulfillment. Amen. Amen. I have four points that I need to run by very fast. Number one, true wealth is found in relationship. True wealth. First, I said to you, true wealth found in good health. Here I come back and say, true wealth is found in relationship. That's why the devil hates relationship. That's why our God decided from eternity past to be three in one. Because he loves relationship. He could have been one on one and saved us a lot of trouble, theological issues. But he said, no, I'll be Father, Son, Holy Spirit, so that we could meet together, so we could decide together, so we could say, let us, let us, let us make man in our image. So we say, who shall go for us? Uh, the Son said, I will go. The Father said, go ahead, I'll send you. And when you go there, send them as I send you. Relationships. How good is your relationship, number one, with God? I used to not like my pastor when I was young. Between the age of 17 and 25, he was annoying. You know why? Because he annoyed the hell out of me. Because everyone, every time he sees me, how are you doing with Jesus? You're a fool. That's how he talks. You're a fool. How are you doing with Jesus? Ah. So it was, there came a time when I used to see him coming, I would go like this. Because I did not like to lie and tell him, mm, that, that's so-so. What does that mean, how you're doing with Jesus? That means, are you reading the Bible? Are you praying? Are you worshiping? Are you attending fellowships? Are you witnessing? Are you, are you anticipating his coming? That, that's, that's what it means. How, how, how are you doing with your relationship with God? Is he first in your life? When we said that the, 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 the list that I put last Sunday, what did I call that? Divine priority, thank you. Divine priority, we said God, God, God first. Before you, before your, before your girlfriend. You know, it's easy to put him before your wife, but before girlfriend, <laughs> it's very easy. After, you know, if there are 10 years of marriage, oh, God is first, hallelujah, no problem. <laughs> Wifey, God comes before you. But girlfriend, how do I know that? Well, I've been pastoring this church for 40 years. I have met a lot of young men that they were so on fire, God, 
They were in every meeting, in every service, uh, doing everything with everything until they met a girlfriend. <laughs> and they disappeared. <laughs> Same thing with girls too. God is before your boyfriend. What does that mean? I'm going to have to explain it right now to all the Hispanic people. I'm spelling, spelling it for you right now. I'm explaining it so good. It means if your girlfriend comes and started, uh, if you have young kids, can you close your ears for me? I, I don't know. Well, you kept them here, then means, that means they could listen to some stuff. Your girlfriend comes and starts playing with your ears and gets you aroused like that. You say to her, God does not know. Mm -mm. Can't do that, girl. God is first. I got a young man over there laughing his heart out. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you, I don't know if his, his mother is touching him or somebody. You know, if you, okay, let's go behind the pulpit and go move on. Sometimes I have to explain what this means. God's first. True wealth is found in relationship. The Bible teaches us that true wealth is found in the quality of our relationship with God and others. Listen to this verse. It's amazing. Proverbs 22.1. A good name and a reputation for integrity are more valuable than silver or gold. Well, so what's a good name? A good name is to be chosen rather, um, hallelujah, than any, any material possessions because... Material wealth can come and go in an instant and does not define who we are as individuals. True wealth, the kind that matters, is not measured in dollars and cents, but in the richness of our relationships. Because I've known rich people, and you go to their funeral, there's only five people. I was, as I was thinking about this uh, last night late, because I started thinking about the sermon on Wednesday. And Thursday and Friday and Saturday, I saw what I do is live this sermon. Like really live it. Think it. Practice it. Write more. Take out. Pray God, help me to, be a, to help your people be healthy mind and spirit and soul. And I thought of Sonny. How many remember our dear brother Sonny? Now, how many knows the way he dressed and drove? And he wasn't really wealthy. But who came to his funeral? There was no room in this building or outside or every, people were, came from everywhere to pay respect to this man because of his relationships, because the way he dealt with people, because the way he made everybody feel welcome and healthy and loved. Am I right, somebody? Yeah. Somebody put your hands together. That's why I put that as number one. The greatest wealth is the great relationships that you surround yourself with. How wealthy are you? Show me your friends. I'll tell you how wealthy you are. Show me how much your children adore you. I'll tell you how wealthy you are. Show me how much you love your children. It's not about bragging, but there is no time or no place or no moment that I get a phone call from my son that I will not run and be there. When he calls me to go fishing, I, I'm not, I don't feel it. I'm, I'm tired. I'm old. It's cold out there. It doesn't get that I right now sit home with a blanket in the middle of May. <laughs> I used to look at these old people. I said, why would they put a blanket on themselves? My mother always had a blanket. I said, Mom, why, why the blanket? Now I get the blanket. I don't take the... <laughs> I, I got the blanket, and he wants me to go fishing last week. And do you think I say no? I never say no. So I went in there. He came and picked me up. I had two sweatshirts and a jacket. He goes, Dad, what are you doing? It's 82. I said, no, you don't stand, boy. Someday you will. <laughs> but I go, I don't go because I want to go fishing. I want to be with him. 
Amen. Jesus spoke about the dangers of placing too much value on material possessions. He says, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And, and, uh, and uh, the second one is wealth is found in generosity. Before I go, I want to encourage you today. How many, how many want to re- just right now receive an impartation? I want to impart on you strength, divine strength, that you will invest in relationship before you invest in stock markets. Invest in relationship, showing love and kindness and building strong connections with others are ways to gain true wealth that lasts. And just, just, I just want to brag today. I just want to brag. I got a free haircut every month for the last 25 years because of good connections that I have with Cheryl Salzman right there. And I don't go to her store. She comes to my office and vacuums my hair after whatever is left of it anyway. <laughs> Invest in relationships. Bye-bye, Mark. I invested in this man for a whole year across the street, right there that's leaving. I used to go every Wednesday for a whole year. I was, walking from here to there was the longest walk. Because I say, Lord, what the heck am I doing? Going there with five, six men. You know, they, I don't know if they listen. Right now he's here every Sunday, and he brought five, six more people with him. Wealth is found in generosity. I got nine minutes left. Lord, help me. True wealth can also be found in generosity. When we give freely and generously, we not only bless others, but also experience a sense of fulfillment and abundance in our own lives. Bible says, Proverbs 11, 24, 25, one person gives freely yet gains even more. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds, in undully, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed by sharing our resources with others and being a blessing to those in need. We can accumulate wealth that goes beyond material possessions. I'll give you an example from this church right here. I have that slide. It's up there already. It's over there, but it's not over here. Oh, here we go. This is what we do with the money that you, that you put on Sunday. We, we proudly, it took us a while to make sure that we've given you the accurate numbers to come up, really dig in there accounting-wise and come up. We, we spent um, 21.3%, not 10%. We teach you to give 10%, but we give 21.3% of every dollar that comes in to other people, to other ministries, to other missions. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. And because of that, we're not really a wealthy church. You know, people that knows numbers and money, they know that we're not a wealthy church. But when... What, what we have, what we own together, what we have spent on this million in the last 15 years, we spent about a million and a half dollars without borrowing a dollar. Amen. Last year alone, beside all that giving, we sent uh, 1,000 to dollars for 15 churches, churches, $15,000 to other churches. So we teach what we believe in and we practice what we teach. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Wealth is found in spiritual growth. Spiritual growth is another key component of gaining wealth that matters. Cultivating a godly character. Because, listen, you leave your children a good name is better than leaving them a million dollars. A lot of people left millions of dollars, but they left a name that that their children is not proud to repeat that name. 
Are, are, are we together this morning? Godly character. Cultivate. Cultivate a godly character. Cultivate your spiritual growth. Don't just think that by showing up on Sunday morning, hearing sermon, putting $10 or $20 or $200 in the back, it's going to grow you spiritually. You can't. you got to cultivate. you got to cultivate a spiritual growth. you got to grow up. you got to become a teacher instead of keep learning forever. you got to become a deliverer instead of being delivered all the time. you got to become a healer instead of being healed all the time. Hello, somebody. Praise the Lord. And, 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 and prioritizing our spiritual growth and relationship with God over material possessions can lead to a richness of heart and soul that transcends any earthly wealth. And I close, wealth is found in eternal rewards. Wealth is found in eternal rewards. Finally, true wealth is found in eternal words that come from living a life aligned with God's purposes. My prayer lately, Lord, help me at this age, every day, hallelujah, God, help me every day that I live now to fulfill your purposes in my generation. I want to die and somebody will say, he fulfilled God's purposes for his generation. Jesus teaches us that. Rewards that come from living a life. I I don't think I need to say any more. Lord, help us to really acquire and gain true wealth by living a life aligned with your purposes. By investing in acts of righteousness, serving others, seeking to build God's kingdom, We can gain wealth that lasts for eternity. I I praise the Lord for for helping me, especially in the last, I would say, ever since Benny Hinn was here. I'm going to close with this. I don't know what that was. Uh, Now, I'm not not advocating Benny Hinn. I'm not, I'm not, you know, that's between him and God, what he does, who he is. That's not the point here. The point is we had him here one time. Some people were very upset that we did. Some people were very happy that we did. Or what I know, we never had people hanging from the windows until he came. You know, that morning at 9 a.m., it was something at 7. At 9 a.m., Bishop, I went out. There was this guy sitting outside. I said, what's the matter? He goes, I'm waiting for Benny Hinn. I said, where do you come? He goes, I drove eight hours to be here. You know, nobody drove 30 minutes to see me. So what the heck? You know, whatever. (laughs) He, He must have been doing something right. I don't know. He, he, he did this, and I'm going to finish with this. That night, we added chairs here and here and there and everywhere. Do you, do you remember how many? I saw so many pastors that were here so early, they never said hello to me before. But now they all want to shake my hand because I know Benny Hinn. You know. <laughs> and I was sitting there with Bishop and Pastor Vi. And he's over here, you know, fixing his hair, you know. I'll tell you how I gained friendship with him. I say, I love your hair. So what do you have to do to the guy? I love your hair. He goes, where have you been all my life? <laughs> he, goes, he comes up, he goes, he went to see Jack Hayford, which is a man I know very well. He's, he's actually a big deal in the denomination that I belong to for many years. In a very bad time of his life, Benny Hinn. He went there to see Jack Hayford, and he said, you know, I would like you to be my pastor because I don't have a pastor, and I know I'm making a mess. I needed to help me. And as he was talking to him, do you remember that? As he was talking to Jack Caver, the, the Lord said to, to Benny, give that man $2,500 a month for the rest of his life. Yes. He said, Lord, how long is he going to live? <laughs> and, and God said, Benny, that's not your business. Just do that. <laughs> and he told Jack, Jack, I'm going to give you $2,500 a month for the rest of your life. And he went to the hotel at night and he, uh, he got a phone call. Somebody woke him up from Dallas called him because my wife and I had the same dream two different nights we need to see you he goes no no we need to see you like now we send you to come first to Dallas went to Dallas they say to him the Lord woke us up both and told us to give you each 5,000 a month for the rest of your life and then he stood he says how many wants to invest how many wants to give 1,000 50 people come up here I'm sitting there I knew half of them 
I said, Lord, they never give a dollar here. You know? <laughs> I'm just telling you what was going on in my heart. You know, you do whatever you want. I'm very transparent at this age. I don't care what I say. I said, Lord, I know that one. I know that one. I know. I never seen a thousand from them in here. Look at them. Then he goes, how many? 500. <laughs> Another 50 people. <gasps> I said, look at that rascal. We had, we, had a, we had a room full downstairs with a pastor doing the same thing. They were giving 500 I figured out, Bishop, in my head, whoop, that guy raised $250,000 in 15 minutes in this place, right here. And we didn't even have this fancy stuff yet. So I was sitting there. I said, okay, Lord, I had $357.50 in my pocket. It was a Wednesday night. I said, I'm going to go in there. And I'm going to give this, but I'm not going to plant it because I need money. I'm going to put it in there because we need three teachers for our school that's starting a week. And I put it, and next day I come in, and there was two cars in the parking lot with a Connecticut license plate. This lady from Connecticut drove down. She said, my, the Lord worked my husband and I and told us to move to Lowell, and I want to teach math, and that's what we're looking for. And she's Korean. I said, wow, Korean math. In that day, in that day, we hired seven teachers. There was only one week left of school. So I said, let me, don't get up and leave. Listen, you're going to listen to this. Then I went to my office, and there was an envelope in my office from a bank that I don't know who that bank is. I opened it. The letter says, we used to have your mortgage on your house 20-some years ago. You overpaid by $357.50. To check. I threw the letter away. I put the check in my pocket. I don't care what bank that is. It was. <laughs> I got my money back. This is on Thursday. Sunday morning, I come here. The church was packed. They thought Benny Hinn is here again. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was packed. I come up here and I preach, and there was this beautiful African woman from Congo wearing a beautiful white suit. She stops me on her way out. She goes, I need to see you. I said, okay, let's go to my, my conference room. My daughter started getting nervous. She went to some people, look at that woman taking my, my, my father to the room. We better, you know, somebody, you know, really, she was, you know. She goes to me, I was here on Wednesday night, and Benny Hinn asked for a thousand each. I went to my pocketbook to give it to him. I wasn't there, but now I know why I wasn't there, because I want to give it to you. Personally, to you. Mary Bell, I don't know if you remember, you walked into my, to my conference room. She was our accountant, the one that testified here. She was our bookkeeper that day. I said, Mary Bell, this woman wants to give me a thousand to me, not to the church, but she has a credit card. What do I do? She goes, I'll take care of that, Pastor. She took the credit card, you know, she gave me the thousand dollars. I became a giving machine from that day. I want to tell you that. From that day, everything, and I have witnesses that will testify and tell you that works here. Everything comes in, and 80 to 90% of it goes out. And the more goes out, the more comes in. I don't have a retirement plan. I don't have, you know, investments in stock markets, but I am wealthy. I have 65... <clears throat> I have 65 men and women that are licensed ministers that calls me Papa in the whole wide world. I am wealthy with relationships. Thanks again for tuning in. We pray the Lord has used this message to speak to you today. If you'd like to stay connected, please subscribe to our weekly podcasts. We pray God's blessing over you wherever you are and wherever you go.